These guys, they gotta prove something. The same way I had to prove myself to be able to fight Loma Chico for all the belts. There ain't no handouts. I'm not gonna give them things I had to work hard for. Hey, this is Antonio, and welcome back to Fighting Words. In this video, I wanna talk about Teofimo Lopez and his prima donna ways. So, Teofimo just won the belts, and he won Pretty much, not pretty much. He won all the belts, right? From Lomachenko. Lomachenko gave him an opportunity to fight for all of his belts, in which case he did, and he won. Great for him. He's a young fighter, young prospect, and he's an amazing fighter. I love his abilities. He has great fighting IQ and fighting abilities. Getting that out of the way. So, take me through the timeline this one. He wins the belts. So naturally, all the young hungry lions are saying, all right, great, I'm next. I want to challenge for the, the, the belts. And I think that also does something to a young fighter when he sees a young fighter go up and he wins and he, he dethrones a champ. And it does something to a psyche like, oh, I'm definitely going to be next. I, I can definitely do this. I seen him do it, we're both in the same age bracket, I'm next. So what I was reading were the words of Teofimo Lopez and basically him saying, prove something the same way I had to. Well, you didn't necessarily go through the ranks of beating everybody up. You fought one guy who just so happened to have done that for you, beat everybody up, collected all the belts. You beat him in a contest, and then you took all the belts. Nothing wrong with that. But don't make it seem like you went through the ranks just collecting belts on your way up to Lomachenko, because you didn't have to, he already had them. And I don't think it's fair or right that you would make the other guys go through a ringer that you didn't necessarily go through. You didn't exactly go through the fire of getting a belt here and a belt there and a belt here, and then finally you made it to Lomachenko. No. So I don't understand your reasoning when you say that they have to prove something to you. The only thing that they should have to prove to you as contenders is that they're number one contenders, that people want to see them fight, that they have exciting fighting styles that people would tune into, and also that you guys pretty much are the same. A few months ago, you were just like them. You were, well, you're still young, but young and hungry. These guys have a right to this belt and you have it. That's what you do as a champion. You defend. Their job as contenders is they try to make their way up the mountain and your job as a champion is to defend them off from the mountain, not the other way around. You don't tell them to march around the mountain until you feel like they've done enough to run up the mountain. And in my personal opinion, that's just another problem with boxing. Um, there's too many shot callers in boxing. The minute you get a belt, you start calling all the shots and you start telling everybody else what you want and you become a boss. There's way too many bosses in boxing. There's too many promotions in boxing, which means that we, as the fans, once again, will have to suffer. We have to suffer and wait until you decide the right conditions for you to fight these contenders. But in the meantime, you fight a bunch of nobodies or people that we just don't want to see you fight and we suffer. You're gonna suffer because you're gonna hear all the fans saying, why don't you fight this guy? And you're gonna be tired of saying, hearing his name. And we're gonna suffer because while you're fighting this tomato can, we're all thinking about this contender over here. And the contenders that I'm speaking of, uh, Devin Haney and Gervonta Tank Davis. You have two guys who have exciting styles. They're they both have fan-friendly styles. They're both energetic. They're, they're both very much so offensive. They want to get in there and they want to mix it up. 
they both want a knockout. Any way you swing it with either one of these two fighters, you're still going to have an amazing fight. Personally, I believe Tiafimo beats Devin Haney. I'm not so sold on Tank just because of his power. I think skill-wise, he might be maybe one notch uh, better than Tank. Just one notch, though. If there, let's just say there were 10 notches. He just has one notch better. But when it comes to the power, Tank has got some power. And I think he can take a shot. I think he can take, he can take, a, he can take a shot. Um, of course, I think they can all take a shot. But Tank, I think he can take a, he can take a good blow. I've seen him in there with other people, much larger people sparring. And I've even seen him on, on, at least on tape, asking much bigger fighters, when are we going to spar? Uh, so clearly, he has no problem with, it, with a, somebody who's got some pop on, at the end of his hands. But when you just talk about fan friendly, when you talk about pay-per-view, when you talk about a fight that's going to generate some money, either way, you can't go wrong. Either way, not to mention they both have like titles, so it's just you win something, but you also walk, walk away with a whole lot more. And to come up with this prissy little attitude, that was the reason why it was so... How long did we wait for... Well, I'm sorry, we're still waiting for Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder. And yeah, you can say, oh, this person's with this promotion and that person's with that promotion. But when it all came down to the money, these fights are getting made because they see how much money these, these fights can generate. Uh, Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury, for a perfect example. Two completely different promotions. But when, when you look at how much money is going to be generated from them, you can put your differences aside. So all these, especially the young fighters, they all say that they, they want to make a lot of money. Well, you want to make a lot of money. The best way to do that is fight each other. I don't like to compare, but one of the reasons why the UFC is so successful is because they put number one against number two. I'm not saying they do it all the time, but typically if they don't do it, it's because number two is hurt. But they at least go find number three. They don't go looking for number seven and saying, hey, it's your lucky day. Come on up, you know, you can you can skip the line. I mean, unless you're like a Conor McGregor. But like, outside of that, it's typically number two who fights number one. And that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. For two reasons. One, he earned it. Number two, it's what the fans want. When you fight as a prize fighter, how you make your prize, the money, is giving the fans what we want to see, which is you fighting the right individual. I don't want to see you fight somebody that I know you can beat. I want to see you fight somebody who's going to put you through the fire. I want to see you fight somebody that's going to bring out a new characteristic in you, make you do something different in the ring, uh, make you use a different uh, skill of yours that I haven't seen you use yet. That's what I want to see. I think that's what we as fans want to see. And I can certainly say that's what we love about the UFC. They make fan-friendly fights. Whoever number two is, number two is going to fight number one. The problem with boxing is number one has the power and the authority to choose or to opt out of facing number two. At any given time and place. And because of that, as a sport, boxing is hurting. Because we, the fans, get thirsty for something else. And it just so happens that you have another uh, fighting promotion who's willing to give me exactly what I want. What I want is number one fighting number two. I don't want to see number one in the world fighting number seven. Nobody wants to see any tomato cans getting, getting the opportunity of a lifetime, but we already know the, the, um, the outcome before the bell even rings in round number one. It's boring and boxing has played this tune way too many times. Um, I hope he changes his tune 
I'm not sure exactly who's really running that camp. I know his father has a lot of influence um, in how he, he feels about things. But um, I hope somebody would at least talk to him and say, listen, if you really want to make the big bucks, the best way to do that and to endear yourself to the fans, the people who are actually going to pay for these pay-per-views, is to fight the guy that they want to see you fight. Yes, Sugar Ray Leonard was great, but he was even greater because he fought the people we wanted to see him fight. Marvin Hagler, Tommy Hearns, Roberto Duran. That's also what made him great. He wasn't shying away from number two. He never shied away from number two. And unfortunately, in this generation, that's exactly what happens. People shy away from number two. Um... Basically, I just hope that doesn't happen. I hope somebody speaks to him. I hope, you know, he has wise advisors around him that say, hey, the best way to do this, the best way to navigate your career is to take on the big fights. The reason why, you know, people love Manny Pacquiao because he has so many wars under his belt. I'm not saying that I want to see him go in there and get into a bunch of wars, but what I am saying is I want him to go in there and test himself skillfully against the best. I want him to lay his head on his pillow at night knowing I fought the best and there's no question about it. Win or lose, I fought the best. And we'll still love you because you didn't shy away. A perfect example of that, Arturo Gatti. He doesn't have the best record in the world, but what do we remember him by? Having that heart, being able, not being able, but, be, but willing to go and fight anybody didn't care who it was. That's what, that's what we, we remember about him. That heart. He had that championship heart. He had a lion's heart. And I hope Tiafimo has that same heart. Um, so if you like this video, also subscribe.